Okay, now I'm going to throw out a couple of characters through history, and I want you to say the first great that pops into your mind. Alberino. All right, I haven't said it yet. Well, that would oh, be good okay. because I was going to say Kermit the Frog. Alberino would be good. Uh, Evil Knievel. Evil Knievel. First great. This is really hard, Rick. This is like impossible. <laughs> I don't want to ask you the same bull okay. questions that everybody else asks okay. you. Okay, Frog's Leap. Okay. No, no, Evil, Great Bride. Great Bride. Evil Knievel, Jump, Motorcycle. Uh, next, next question. Walter Matthau. A sort of dour grape. A. What is this serious, goofy. Next, next question. <laughs> this isn't going very well, but... Well, I, I promise that I wasn't going to ask the same old questions, like, tell me about your bot you know, I wanted to think of something different, because how often do you get a chance to sit down with Randall Graham? Well, one thing I did do, by the way, is I put something out on Twitter asking folks online what I should ask Randall. So let's right. look and see if anybody's answered that. Hopefully we got a little cell signal here. Walter Matthau. I'm still, I'm still thinking about Walter Matthau. It's got to be something that's like old and dry. It's got that leathery shoe characteristic. Like maybe a 1981 Bordeaux. Probably an Unico. All right. Uh, you see Bo on Twitter said, we'd like to know your thoughts on where natural wine movement will go in the next five years. Good question. Um, well, you know, I mean... Believer in natural wines, but my primary allegiance is to wines that actually taste good. And so, and ultimately, you don't drink the label; you drink the wine. And wine must give pleasure. And the problem with natural wines is that some of them are brilliant. And I think the greatest wines are natural wines, but not all natural wines are delicious. Yeah. Sometimes nature takes its course and these wines kind of veer off into different directions, some of which are kind of intellectually interesting, but just not very nice to drink. So, I mean, I love the idea of wines that have life force. Life force for me is, is are wines that don't oxidize, wines that um, have this kind of um, substance to them. And uh, natural wines can have that character, but that in and of itself, being natural is not necessarily a signifier of quality. It suggests yeah, good interesting point. qualities, but not necessarily pleasure. Are there any, if you had to pick one or two that you really think are a good example of how <clears throat> natural wine can really turn out? Well, well. great wines, <clears throat> there's a, uh, a character in the, in the, the Cornas called Thierry Alamond, who makes a wine in certain villages a cornas without sulfur. Hmm. Wine is totally brilliant. Hmm. It's totally brilliant. Hmm. Cool. All right. Next question is from Nick, aka Fermented. Nicholas, where can I get those specs? Oh, um, Santa Cruz uh, on the mall. It's called IQ. I'm not mistaken. Not mistaken. Appropriately, or aptly named. Do you have a favorite Arthur? I'm sorry, author. Uh, Arth Arthur. Uh, Arthur Conan Doyle would be my favorite Arthur. <laughs> I always like Arthur from the movie Arthur was my favorite because that's the only one I know but you want to know your favorite author well you know honestly I, I, I read a lot but David Foster Wallace is, is a favorite and uh, Thomas Pynchon of course is my excellent nice I don't know about you guys but it seems like nowadays most of the reading I've done in the last year is on blogs oh books dear. yeah oh dear. I need to get back to that uh, let's see what, here's another one, what do you think you'll be doing 10 years from now? Um, I don't know what I will be doing. What I want to be doing is working in the vineyard. If, I, if, I've not, if I'm not working in the vineyard 10 years from now, I think I should um, be doing something else because that's, I have a wonderful life. I really do have a great life. But so much of my great life is taken up in schmoozing, going to winemaker dinners, talking on the telephone. Not enough of it is outside, off fresco. My ambition is to be, hmm. be outside, be outdoors. And when you go to the winemaker dinners and you work in the industry, you kind of see a lot of the other side of humanity, right? You see a lot of the inebriated side of 
people, you know, leaning on the table. Yeah. And yeah. It, I can only imagine what you're used to seeing when you go to these winemaker dinners and the kind of conversations you're having. Maybe it's partially slurred. Right. Maybe it's... Partially surreal. Yeah. It, it depends. I mean, it's, it's lovely. I mean, people show up at these dinners because they like your wine. It's not because they hate your wine that they're there. It's because they like your wine. Yeah. So... But sometimes, and the, the people are always very nice, most of the time, always nice. But it's kind of like eating like four desserts, you know what I mean? It's like one dessert is enough, four desserts are too many. Yeah, that's true. I need mean, less um, praise and more like sales, basically. Hmm. I think probably a lot of the wineries, the wine industry would like that, but you have a wine club. Mm-hmm. You also have distribution, right? Right. So that's when people come. They they're probably a mix of both, right? Consumers, but also wine club members. Yes. Yes. And here's something I always wanted, wondered, or wanted to ask you is if you could travel around the world and take over any vineyard, any winery, like a pirate, like you pull up alongside him and you got your Captain Crunch yep. out on. Yep. What's one vineyard and winery you'd love to commandeer and just take over? Swords drawn. Storm in the battlefield. Well, it's an interesting question. I mean, it's actually not an interesting question because you know you can't really do that. But you sure? Let's try it. You know, has anyone ever tried that? You know, let me rephrase your question. My wife um, does that a lot. <laughs> I mean, for example, people have said, you know, Randall, you're such a Francophile, Italophile. Why don't you just like buy a vineyard in France or Italy? Well, apart from the fact that I don't have enough money to buy a vineyard in France or Italy, I've always thought that if I were making wine in France or Italy, I would be in jail. They would put me in jail, sort of prophylactic thing. Um, because they have so many rules. And whatever it, it, it was that I did there, I'm sure I would break rules kind of left and right. Yeah. Inadvertently. I can see that. So I'm actually very happy doing what I'm doing in California. I love, I mean, I don't know whether I'll succeed in in these new vineyards, but I love the fact that I can do whatever the heck I want to do. I don't have to, I'm not bound by so much regulation.